Hi students and welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Industrial Chemistry Options, a series of videos that looks at how we can apply our knowledge of chemistry to industry. This particular one is going to focus on the industrial production of sulfuric acid. And if you've been watching the previous ones, you'll know that um, we've talked about how we extract sulfur um, using the fresh process. So in this video, we're going to look at the three steps that are involved in the production of sulfuric acid from sulfur. So the first step involves the production of sulfur dioxide. Now, one of the ways of doing this is by um, extracting sulfur using the fresh process. And then often this happens uh, at high heats, so the sulfur may actually be a liquid, and combines with oxygen to form sulfur dioxide. Occasionally this may also happen um, inside of a uh, smelter where ores may be refined um, that contain sulfides, and sulfur dioxide is often produced from that process as well. Um, but once we have the sulfur dioxide, the second step is an equilibrium um, that involves sulfur dioxide and uh, oxygen to produce sulfur trioxide. And this process is also known as the contact process. And we'll have a look at why that's the case in just a moment. And then the third process is the um, hydration, basically, of the sulfur trioxide to produce sulfuric acid. Often this stage too will go through an intermediate uh, where we will uh, produce the compound oleum, H2S2O7, um, in a liquid form, and then we will produce the sulfuric acid from there. So I'll explain each of these in just a little bit of detail in this video. So the first step occurs in the combustion um, furnace, and as I said, um, often because of the temperatures that are involved, the sulfur may actually be in liquid form rather than in a gaseous form, uh, rather than in a solid form, uh, but either way, what we want is the production of sulfuric, uh, of sulfur dioxide. So if we take liquid sulfur and we spray it into oxygen enriched air at normal atmospheric pressure, then what we do is we produce this sulf, uh, sulfur dioxide. Now the problem is that we have to make sure we keep it away from water because we know that sulfur dioxide will dissolve in water to produce sulfurous acid and we don't want that. So we want to make sure that we have a dehydrating agent that's going to remove any of the water vapor from the air. And of course, sulfuric acid itself is one of those dehydrating agents. Um, but however, this particular process is one that occurs at very high temperatures. So we um, also, you'll notice from the um, delta H value that this is an exothermic reaction. Um, and because of that, we are going to produce heat energy as a result of this reaction. And therefore, we want to make sure that as the uh, process is occurring, we want to be cooling that mixture down back to around about 400 uh, degrees C. So that's the first step in the process, conversion of sulfur into sulfur dioxide. The second step in the process is called the contact process. This is an equilibrium, and this is one of the important components of the production of sulfuric acid because it's an equilibrium there are implications around things like temperature and pressure and shifting of the position of equilibrium and that involves the application of Le Chatelier's principle which by now should be fairly familiar to you this process is called a contact process because it involves bringing the um, reactants into contact with a catalyst and the catalyst could be platinum or vanadium, a vanadium oxide in this case I've, I've put there. The reason the catalyst is there is to increase the rate of reaction. Because the forward direction is exothermic, again we've got a negative value which is exothermic. And as a consequence, when the um, temperature is increased, we're actually going to shift the reaction back towards the favoring of the reactant side, and that is going to result in a decrease in yield, which is not what we want. So we have to counterbalance any increase in temperature to increase reaction rate by increasing the kinetic energy of the particles by the fact that those increases in temperature will actually favor the formation of the reactants and decrease our yield. 
So in order to overcome this, we um, have a reaction occurring with a catalyst, probably somewhere up around the 500, 550 degrees Celsius mark. Now, one of the things that's important to remember about this process is there may well be a couple of different catalyst beds. So we may have multiple catalyst beds that we are sequentially um, moving the materials through from one to the next in order to um, continue the reaction going. And so we may actually be dropping the temperature through these catalyst beds so that the catalyst is still there to keep the reaction uh, going, but the lower temperatures are going to be pushing the yield back towards the uh, product side. Often um, around about 70% of the sulfur dioxide will react um, in the first of these beds, so about 70% for the first one, and then we move on to the second, um, where we cool the mixture and then we um, may get a slower reaction rate but a higher yield. So as we decrease T, we increase uh, yield of this particular, um, of the sulfur trioxide. To further reduce the concentration of the sulfur dioxide, so we may even use the third catalyst bed, um, but uh, in order for us to continue to um, try and make sure that we drive this reaction, we have to try and make sure that we drop the concentration of the sulfur dioxide to um, less than about 0.3% um, prior to release. into the environment. So you can see we're actually really trying to drive this equilibrium as far as we can towards the right in order to make sure that we have used up um, as much of our sulfur dioxide as possible. Now the third and final step is the step that involves the uh, an, an adsorption tower. So just to um, be clear about the difference um, if something is absorbed, it, it goes into a, a material. If it's adsorbed, it sits on the surface of the material. So like in the last um, process, the contact process, where we may find um, the two reactants sitting on the surface of the um, catalyst, that's what absor adsorption is. It, it's about sitting on the surface. Once the sulfur trioxide forms, it can be dissolved in water droplets in order to form sulfuric acid. The problem with this step is that the mist that forms may be very difficult to separate from the sulfur trioxide gas. So when we get these two things mixed together, it can be quite difficult to separate them. We also know that this is a bit of a problem um, in terms of its um, corrosive nature. And so one of the alternatives to this is to actually produce this intermediate step, this oleum. The easiest way to do that is to take the sulf, uh, sulfur trioxide and react it with some already formed sulfuric uh, acid. This is going to give us our oleum. And of course, from here, the oleum can then um, be added to water uh, in order to form um, sulfuric acid. So this is an alternative um, and an intermediate step, which is a much safer step um, and enables a much more regulated control over um, the production of the sulfur or sulfuric acid. Consequences of this process are, are obviously going to be fairly significant in terms of the corrosive nature of the product. So, and also you need to make sure that you're analyzing the whole of this process in the context of um, that equilibrium that occurs in step two in the contact process. Thanks for watching.